Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being flexible and joining us at 2.30 today to get the latest updates. As usual, I will start with an overview of the numbers for today. We have 209 new COVID-19 cases to report. There are 257 patients who are currently hospitalized. Of those 257, 58 are currently in the intensive care unit and 45 of those 58 in the ICU are currently on a ventilator. Sadly, we have six additional COVID-19 associated fatalities to report. Two people were in their 80s and four people were in their 90s. Our hearts are with the families of these people who we have lost and with the families of all Rhode Islanders who have passed away over the last several weeks and months. The numbers I announced today are posted on our data page on the Rhode Island Department of Health website, along with updated city and town information and additional demographics data updated, which we will continue to maintain regularly. These numbers had not been updated online for a brief period of time because we were doing a big data migration from a traditional disease tracking database to one with the capacity to respond to our expanded current needs. This system will allow us to integrate many different functions that we were managing into one system. For example, in this one system, we will be able to do case investigations, contact tracing, symptom monitoring, and outreach to people in quarantine who need support. This new database will allow many more people to access and work with the data simultaneously so that we can become increasingly effective and rapid in our response as we are intending to do every single day. We needed to expand this capacity given that we have dozens and sometimes more than 100 people working with the data simultaneously in order to effectively manage the cases of more than 13,000 people who have tested positive in Rhode Island as well as the contacts that we are working with to help them all stay safe. I wanna thank everyone across state government and particularly at the Rhode Island Department of Health who worked very hard to help us move from one system to the other. The governor mentioned the technology support team earlier this week. All of us have been partnering, working diligently to update this data and continue to make sure we are able to respond to the increasing need of this response. I also wanna thank the team in our Center for Vital Records at the Rhode Island Department of Health. Using records such as birth certificates and marriage licenses, we were able to fill in a lot of gaps on race and ethnicity for a lot of the records. This continues to be our laser-focused priority to really make sure we have the information in one place that allows us to analyze and be pinpointed in our response. A tremendous amount of work has gone into pulling that together. We were able to get race and ethnicity information added for about roughly 1,000 people through this mechanism, along with the many other components we have been using to cull this important information. I, as I've said in the past, this race and ethnicity data is key to our response and key to ensuring that we support everyone throughout the state, particularly the communities disproportionately impacted. In terms of the trends that you will see updated, things have unfortunately not changed drastically. We continue to see more cases higher percents of cases among Latino Rhode Islanders, as well as an elevated percent of cases and hospitalizations occurring among African American Rhode Islanders. The fatality uh, percentages, however, are a little closer to what we would expect to see in alignment with the percent of those races and ethnicities across Rhode Island. 
I did want to note that our overall number of reported cases rose by a little more than 1%. That roughly 1% of cases has been distributed over the last two months. This was because of the data cleaning that we did over the course of this transition between the two systems. When you're gathering information on something as large and as fast moving as a pandemic, this kind of data cleaning and validation is ongoing. We have tested well over 100,000 people, and we have the tens of thousands of cases that we have, and it requires extensive attention to detail, data cleaning, and validation that has led to that slight increase by the 1% that we will continue to ensure remains accurate for everyone. We also have updated now the information by cities and towns. And it's important to acknowledge that we continue to see high rates in the um, cities most impacted. Central Falls has a 26% positivity, Providence 22% positivity, North Providence 18% positivity, Pawtucket 17% positivity, and Woonsocket as well. This information just helps us emphasize the fact that we have our work cut out before us. This is what we are laser focused on addressing with the data following, and we will continue to update and assess this regularly as it informs the response that we want to be most effective in addressing, particularly for our communities most disproportionately impacted. To finish, I'll return to the updates about the Crush COVID app that we discussed yesterday. And as the governor shared, we had the number of people across Rhode Island who have now installed the app. I have done that as well. We are very excited about the engagement and hope that we can continue to see people upload the app and, and obtain the information that's needed, continuing to um, follow the opportunity for you to make the choice as you need to. As I was asked uh, yesterday if the app allows the Department of Health or anyone else to see where people are in real time, I want to again clarify that this technology is not about locating people in real time. It is meant as an electronic log of the places that you have been in the past, and we only know that you were in a place in the past if you decided to provide that information to us. As the governor mentioned yesterday, it will only then just continue to live on your phone, and everyone has the opportunity to determine how they want that data to be handled. We understand that people have privacy concerns. We take that very seriously. And please know that the only information that is shared with us is the information that you choose to share. If you do choose to share the information with us, it will only be used to help keep you and the people around you healthy and safe. That's something that the Department of Health um, has had experience with for years and continues to take that responsibility um, with honor and handle accordingly. It's all part of the response as we go forward. 